everyone. Thank you all very much for joining me. Today, I'm going to share you with the paper, which is based on the field study that I started in my junior year at Tech University. So this study took me um, 14 months from August 2020 to October 2021. And it has some very interesting findings that I would very much like to share with you. So the title of my paper is Upstream First, an ethnographic study of open source software uh, community. And so here's how my presentation will be structured today. So I will first briefly introduce the motivation of this study. Then I will give an overview of the methods. Then the main body of the talk, the findings in the paper. And finally, I will sum up my presentation and talk a little bit about the contribution and implication of this study. So first, let's talk about motivation of this research. So open source software community is truly an, a fascinating phenomenon in contemporary organizations because it is a form of organization that at first glance defies the basic logic of the economic and the organizational theory. Why so? Because without contracts, uh, compensation, or even property rights, the open source software community is able to produce some of the most advanced, the most complex software, such as Linux and Android, that underpins the day-to-day -day functioning of our society. So therefore, my study in uh, open source software community was motivated by these perplexing questions. The first being, why are software engineers and companies willing to give up their intellectual property, especially without monetary reward, to contribute to the open source software community? And the second being, what factors contribute to community-based innovation success as an alternative and attractive model of technological innovation. So to answer these questions, I spent 14 months in nine of the Apache Software Foundation communities for in-depth research from August 2020 to October 2021. And I took ethnographic research methods to conduct these studies. So I become an insider uh, by taking on actual community roles, which allowed me to obtain a wealth of observational data. I also interviewed 31 uh, community participants and accumulated nearly 300,000 words of transcript. I also collect data from online live chat platform, including WeChat, QQ, MailList, and Slack. So these are basically all the communication happens in the community. And beyond this, questionnaire is also used to help us get plenary understanding of the participants' uh, perception of open source software community and their motivation and the uh, community's organizational patterns. Then fo uh, following the guidelines of the grounded theory approach, identify some basic constructs and further develop a dynamic organizational model of Apache open source software community. Then I collected um, the data and coded the data and elevated the coding to a theoretical level by constructing an institutional model of open source software communities. So based on my field work, I have some pretty interesting findings that I would like to share with you and discuss with you. So first, let's take a look at the basic working of the open source software community uh, and the open source software. So we want to know how does open source uh, participants collaborate and interact to build the software as we see um, on GitHub or other open source platforms. According to my findings, the clone modify, commit, and merge chain is the key to understand the basic working of open source community. As you can see on the figure right side, the community version of the software is upstream and the user side is downstream. So if you are a user who want to use an open source software, the first thing you will need to do is to download it, 
which the technical term for it would be clone. And for most open source software, they are not applicable right away after the download because you will have to make some changes to uh, fit your specific task uh, or configurations. While some changes are minimum, um, a lot of them are quite significant. So until now, for most short-term or one-time uh, users who don't need to make major customizations to open source software, uh, so they would basically become the community's free riders. So they don't submit their changes back to the upstream. But for some users, they contribute their changes back to the community and become parts of it. According to my observation and other reliable surveys, a lot of them are actually companies. And for companies, they act rationally. So they don't open source just because of ideology or psychological motivation. So the question here is that, why would they do so? I think a possible answer is due to the iterative nature of communities. An ideal upstream version of the software is constantly upgrading, moving forward. So there will be new feature coming in. And for some users, they would want to include those features in their own downstream versions. So they have two choices. Um, the first being download the upstream version and try to merge the new features into the downstream version by themselves. And the second choice is to constantly commit the local changes in the downstream back to the upstream. So the first choice would be out of synchronization with upstream. And for those users, they are basically maintaining the software by themselves. And the second choice is to keep synchronizing with the community. And in this case, you let the community to do um, the maintenance job. Note that in each version, if the downstream is not synchronized with the upstream, then the cost of clone and remodify would be tremendous as we have uh, talked about uh, earlier. Therefore, the longer the synchronization uh, which is that you are, if you, the longer you are out of synchronized, the greater the cost. Thus, for long term users, especially those who need to constantly customize the software for their own purpose, synchronization would be the optimal choice because they are, um, the, because they need to limit it, their um, cost. And since they are usually company users, Upon this observation, I believe that the maintenance cost would be an essential element that underlies the development of open source software community. And for individual participants, of course, there will be other motivation comes along. Participation in a community often requires a great deal of interaction in the networks of community, which mostly takes place in the commit step. So this would lead to increase in individual social capital and the enhancement in competence. And interestingly, these incentives of professional networking in open source communities are particularly important for open source participants, a phenomenon that was not addressed in the previous literature. After we have learned about the basic working Let's move on to talk about the organizing pattern of the community. So in terms of day-to-day -day work, the community is actually very democratic because the task and the workload for each participant are very um, uh, autonomous, which, which means that the workload and task for each participant are entirely determined by themselves. In terms of decision-making, the structure, however, remains hierarchical as the core members, which is the PMC, Project Management Community, and the committers, they are chosen by the existing core team. And the core team has the power to control software's future development. Uh, note that I use the quotation mark here because of the member 
uh, with higher title actually have no power to command the inferior one. So the power they have are only on the software itself. The core team title is also a symbol of competence, which also brings prestige that has the potential to translate into materialized benefits, such as access to better work. And the PMC and commuters title also provides legitimacy for the core team to build startups companies on open source software, which is a very important element for the open source ecosystem to thrive. Uh, why so? Um, this is uh, mainly because the core team controls direction of the open source software. So it is the central factor in determining the development of the community. So if the open source software community would be able to develop, there must be a strong motivation for the core team. And according to my survey in different open source communities, one of the fundamental drivers of the core team's hard work and entrepreneurial spirits actually come from commercialization of the software. So because of these characteristics, in some of the core teams, they act more accordingly to business practice involving cross company alliances and the internal governance. So this core team of good community also grows iteratively, but it's largely stable over a short period of time. And they are more hardworking than average contributors. As you can see from the graph on the right side, which is this snowball model of open source software community. So in the beginning of an open source software community, the maintenance costs are mainly borne by the core team. And ideally, as the core team build the software better, the value of the software will start to increase and more and more contributors will be attracted to participate due to the consideration of maintenance costs and the incentives of professional networking, as we have mentioned above. In this process, the maintenance cost of the community will decrease because more people will be working together and the value will increase further. And this creates a virtuous cycle. But however, this cycle could also work in other ways uh, where it may turn into a negative one. But the main point here is that whether the snowball grows or melts, it largely depends on the core team. So based on all the findings we discussed above, I also proposed the framework in the paper, which is an abstract of the above findings to explain open source software communities development as well as their heterogeneity. So the first element is um, the economy of community-based maintenance. And the second one is iterative generation of value. And the third one is incentives of professional networking. And the last one is the entrepreneurship of core team. And I believe these are the fundamental factors underlies open source communities development. And I think these four factors have the potential to generate hypotheses in future quantitative research studies to further examine the dynamics of open source ecosystem. So finally, I will briefly talk about the contribution and the implication of this study. Since few studies have taken an ethnographic approach to study open source software communities, I believe that my research can add a unique perspective to the uh, existing literature and our understanding of the open source communities as a whole. And the highlight of this study is the proposed complex structure of open source community. Previous research has not looked at the open source communities from an organizational perspective. And the organizational characteristics are specifically manifested in the core team assuming leadership responsibilities and coordinating the software development process. While prior research has tend to view the open source communities 
as antithetical to traditional innovation organizations. The proposed framework in my study suggests that important pillars of traditional innovation organizations, such as cost rationalities, uh, the pace of innovation, professional networks, and leadership are also pre present in the open source communities. Thus, this study provides legitimacy for comparative studies of traditional organizations and open source communities. So I think this will be the end of my presentation. If you have any questions about this paper, please feel free to ask in the Q&A session or to reach out to me. And thanks again for listening. Goodbye.